Can't decide and torn between a romantic, comedy, action, or an indie film to watch for the weekend? Well, well, well. Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast is your ultimate guide to the latest movies. Join us as we dissect the latest on the blockbusters. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Movie Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And we are talking about some Spider-Man-related films. We are going to be starting with Venom, which just came out um, 2018. I want to say it came out maybe the like... Fifth. Yeah, October 5th yeah. of 2018. Um, so this is a recent movie. and um, Marvel's awesome. Marvel pumps out so many films yeah i am amazed also i did notice that venom is i believe they said in association with marvel yeah so it's not just marvel right which is interesting i feel like i definitely noticed a, i noticed a slight difference mm -hmm. i would say versus like um we're also going to be talking about in this podcast um spider-man homecoming which is the most recent spider-man film and that is definitely full marvel right for sure um, so to start with Venom, uh, again, as we said, um, 2018, and this movie uh, just came out, and I watched it recently, and I was excited because I like the idea of a Marvel movie about Marvel villains. Yeah, I, I watched really it too. Liked I liked it. Yeah, and I, I kind of like, I kind of wish they would do like a Loki movie or something. Yeah, you know, just the come up of Loki so you can right. see. Yeah, and I love the idea of the villain, and I also think it kind of works with like a Halloween sort of vibe because yeah. he's a villain, you know, and I think I think that works out well. Um, so I was I was really excited. Um, I was surprised though because when I went, I went probably like the day it opened, and it was not packed. No, me either. <laughs> yeah, which I, shocked me because it's Marvel, right? And I was uh, so I guess that was almost like a sign for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, okay, so Venom is about um, the San Fran there, it takes place in San Francisco, and there's a reporter whose name is Eddie Brock, who's played by Tom Hardy, and he basically takes on powers of an alien they call them like symbiotes yeah symbiotes symbiotes meaning they need a host to live on yeah like a parasite they right. don't like being called parasites yeah <laughs> but it's, it's like, like a parasite, a parasite. <laughs> and so they need a host to live and to survive and so they are taken to earth um, by a pharmaceutical company right and events happen Stud yeah and, and they studied on there's yeah they're studied mm -hmm. for their future potential for humans exactly and um, well, his Eddie whole Brock goal there is one. so they can live in outer space yes as the as like just like living out aliens yeah, exactly. and with humans like together right and live in the universe mm -hmm. and through a series of events um eddie brock again played by tom hardy gets one of these symbiotes and they become like a perfect match right so the symbiote can sort of use Tom Hardy's body body yep. um, and they mix well and like Tom Hardy can hear the symbiote talking, talking. to him <laughs> that was, that part was funny to me like just the <laughs> back and forth between the two yeah, yeah I thought that was hilarious the jokes were great he did that awesome I think other than his accent kept going in and out that bothered me oh yeah it I mean annoying. I love Tom Hardy yeah he's a good so, yeah. yeah and it, also I've I've seen a thing on the internet where Tom Hardy's roles are always his face being covered <laughs> <laughs> because he did like Venom and then he did um like Bane and oh, Batman yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, but he has such a great face he does he, covers it up. he does also I would say though I did not realize his teeth until this movie right <laughs> he definitely yeah. has lived like the, Brits, the british like stereotypical yeah. teeth yeah and i did not realize that until i saw exactly it well because his face is always yeah covered. his face is always covered but there was close-ups on it so it was yeah like, yeah what your teeth are braces man yeah Why? i'm not like you're famous now right you get so braces? It really <laughs> i mean you could but i don't think it would really matter because i mean like um who was it um what's his name who played in jim carrey Oh, his bottom teeth yeah, are like super they're not perfect. Great. Yeah, yeah and he, he doesn't even care. 
That's true. That's so, true. But I, I guess it doesn't, doesn't matter for yeah, him anymore. He's going to get hired no matter what. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also in this film is Michelle Williams, who plays um, Anne Wayne. Wayne? Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like the love interest in this film. Um, and then there are a couple other characters. Um, another actor that I recognize is Jenny Slate, who plays um, Dr. Dora Skirth. And she works in this pharmaceutical company. And what I also really liked... What I did like about this movie is the San Francisco setting because yeah. not a lot of films are like actually filmed in San Francisco because it's very expensive. Mm-hmm. And there were some scenes that I recognized the locations, right? Um, like I'm like from the Bay Area, so I recognized that and I appreciated that. Um, but this is like a made up pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company, right. and they're very technologically advanced. They've mm-hmm. made rockets, which is how they got the symbiotes. And as we mentioned, they're trying to help humanity by combining people with these symbiotes but the character played by jenny slate is like this is not cool right essentially it's not humane like the people yeah. because they could not be a perfect match right if they weren't compatible the people would just die off right because the symbiote then, would just well, reject the, people the body and the symbiote would, would the die symbiote off? die off? yeah because oh. they if there was nobody there for it to attach to oh. they both would die oh Okay, so like it if it just they tried too much and it yeah. just didn't. Oh, interesting. Okay, I did not notice that. Um, so sort of like in this movie, Venom is like a well-known Marvel villain, but I also yeah. um, they have another villain in this film who is Carlton Drake, who's like the owner of this pharmaceutical company, Life uh, Life uh, Force. Yeah, yeah, and I thought he was a pretty good villain. Um, he did good too. I I did like him, yeah. and I, I hadn't seen him in anything else. Me at least not that I, I was recognized. just going to ask you if you've seen him in something else. I not that I can think of. Um, I'm th- I think I'm he'll sure be in more in, after this. Yeah, as and well. I'm sure he's in like smaller things coming up. But this was yeah. probably one of his bigger roles. Yeah, like, yeah, just in, in the show. Marvel film. Right. Yeah, he did have this one um, sort of evil speech <laughs> that <laughs> I enjoyed, where he's like trying to convince someone of something. Yeah, and he brings in this like biblical reference of Isaac, basically like self sacrificial Right. And I I really thought that was good. Um, but I I will say of I like the idea of this, and I like the framework of it like the story idea of yeah. venom and tom hardy and mm-hmm. um their sort of like connection as sort of a parasite right um i did really like that but there were some things about this that i felt didn't really click for me right me too and uh, just some things that i wanted to like but i don't think they pulled them off the the love interest yes i was not the connection i didn't feel at like it was real at all yeah. michelle um what's michelle, her name? Williams. michelle williams yeah, she's, she's a, good, a actress. good actress yeah yeah i just didn't feel her fitting this part at all right so i agree i was I agree. like and and as as the movie in general i don't feel like it was necessary honestly like it was right. like you don't need to be here so for everybody else to get the backstory and what they're trying to provide as far as venom coming and starting off but right i mean i i felt like i kind of got what they were trying to say yeah but i just don't think it was pulled off very well and i i'm a little i'm not exactly sure what the cause of that was like i think there might have been some director maybe not good direction right (laughs) um and i think like as i said some of the framework was good but they had some really awkward one-liners in the writing yeah and i feel like maybe some of the writing didn't work out for her character um, or, because, and her delivery was just yeah her delivery too. was weird yeah yeah and uh, yeah and as you said i think some of the chemistry between her and tom hardy just was not yeah there. it didn't seem like it was it's like they almost just barely met and they immediately hated each other right but they were like yeah. forced to be like you're in a relationship so it's like yeah. okay gosh yeah i like i watched this with my boyfriend and he was like there's a scene when it feels like they just filmed them in two separate times and then just mesh the yeah, right <laughs> it them does side by like- side <laughs> Because they didn't want to actually see each see, other. Exactly. That's what it felt like, too. That's why I was like, what's the purpose of the love interest? Because um, Tom Hardy and um, just kind of embracing the venom and, right. you know, the the whole aspect mm-hmm. of it. He could have just did that without, you know. Right. Like, but her I, story did not yeah. bring the venom thing. Right. It didn't make it clearer or explain it or right. anything. She I, didn't need to be there. Exactly. I feel like the only time, the only reason why it was she was in there it was for the jokes between tom hardy like um <laughs> eddie uh, eddie bauer or uh, brock eddie brock and venom for like yeah. the jokes between them yeah. in his head for the relationship i'm like yeah okay those jokes are 
you know, because she's there, but... Right, and there are some parts that she plays in the film that contribute to the story, but I'm like, but they could have done that in Without many her. other ways. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I also feel like as a director, well, maybe, I don't I don't know how this works, maybe they couldn't have just, like, hired her, Michelle Williams, and then been like, this is not working, and yeah. then just use someone else or right. something. <laughs> but I feel like as a director, you're like, this is really not catching on. Like, right. the chemistry is not igniting. Well, they could have just redone, because... I mean, she didn't have, like, super, super large parts no, in the movie. No, You know what I mean? Yeah. And but. I yeah, and I, I feel like they wanted to use her kind of to display some of er, Eddie Brock's, like, character. Yeah. But I don't feel like that No, it worked. didn't give it. No, no. No. Not at all. I really like how they are, how they're bringing out, like, the beginning of... Um, of the villain and why he's there and how he, you know, just started off and all that stuff. Me and my brother-in-law were talking about that the other day. He's really big Marvel fan. Mm -hmm. And when he, when we were talking about like the suicide squad, which is DC, Mm -hmm. um, and how they kind of just throw a bunch of more, um, villains together. It's like, okay, you didn't give anybody any backstory other than something quick at the beginning. And then it's like, okay, now you guys are all on a team. You have to go do something good. Um, to oh, save the yeah. world, you know what I mean? Yeah. But with Marvel and bringing Venom there, it's like they didn't just throw him into like he's automatically a villain for Spider Man. It's like, no, he started out like this. This is what you guys are going to see. And then I feel like they are able to leave it open for the future um, quarrels with Spider Man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and keep talking about Venom and Spider Man. Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Movie Podcast. We are still talking about Venom. Um, And another thing that I want to mention, we talked a little bit about some of the chemistry between Tom Hardy and um, his love interest in the film, uh, Michelle Michelle Williams. Williams. Uh, What I... What I felt like that relationship didn't necessarily work with the chemistry. I also felt like there were some things about this, like the storyline almost felt too slow. And then yeah. too fast. Like, I wanted him yeah. to become Venom sooner. And I feel like he did not... Like, I expected the movie for most of it to be about him being Venom. Right. And I feel like that didn't necessarily happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and that just, like, didn't happen as quickly as I wanted. And then once it did happen, there were st- parts about the Venom character development that I thought went too fast without yeah. enough explanation. Because when I see Venom, I think, like, hardcore villain, sort of, like, symbiote, like, parasite type mm-hmm. thing using humans... And, and I just felt wreaking havoc, right, just wreaking havoc, just destroying like, things. Yeah, and it wasn't. It wasn't like that. No, you know. And I they agree. they kind of made Venom not as evil as villainy. Yeah, you know, yeah. as maybe I would have expected, and that surprised me. Like you said, like there is some uh, like uh, Tom Hardy's character can hear Venom in his mm-hmm. head, and that was not what I was expecting. No, me either. Because yeah. I thought he just, like, took over the bodies mm-hmm. and just did his thing. Right. And then it's like, he's in charge. You right. You know what I mean? Not just, this is a, we work together kind of thing. Right. That surprised me yeah. as well. And sort of, like, it also surprised me how much power Tom Hardy kind of had. Yeah. Over the Venom character mm-hmm. at times. And the fact that Venom was like, oh, I'm starting to like you. And I'm like, yeah. that's weird. You like him just because you can use his body. Yeah. That's weird to exactly. me that you'd be like, oh, I like this character. You're like, why yeah, exactly <laughs> you're an alien you can get another host right and still yeah just move on yeah so i thought that was kind of weird um and i just felt like there were some things about the oversight and like the producing and directing that yeah. i didn't think worked out well right um also i think we should mention um this movie was not super like cgi 
um, yeah. like special effecty. Like Marvel is very oh yeah special effects, and mm-hmm. I didn't feel that as much in this. But there is Venom, and he's he yeah he basically is yeah, and he's a special effect. But um, there's like there's a fight scene that has some special mm-hmm. effects that were a little hard for me to look at sometimes yeah. you know like i didn't like how they rendered some of it and mm-hmm. it was confusing to me visually right um so i would say i didn't enjoy that as much as maybe i could have um some of the fight scenes were interesting to me because it wasn't like a angry person on angry person just fighting you know right. it was like fighting but then it's like i'm so sorry i i didn't mean to do that right let me just yeah. hit you again yeah it, it was, was a little weird. awkward yeah yeah i agree there was some awkward fighting in that that I I didn't really buy. Um, <laughs> yeah. But generally, I would say, I feel like there was some good framework here. I just was not a big fan of the overall film. You know, like, yeah. I could almost see if maybe the numbers don't go as well as they want in yeah, this. Exactly. I could almost see them making it again. Sort of like how they did, like, they'd made Green Lantern and then they were like, we don't like this. Yeah. And they just never revisited it. Exactly. Like, I could almost see that happening. They're probably waiting for it to just die off a little bit to, like, come out with a better one. <laughs> But I could see that. Or that. if they make like a follow up to this. That's what I was going to say. If they yeah. made a part two just to dive deeper into the Venom character, mm-hmm. not the the host, um, Eddie Brock. Right. Um, and how he kind of just takes over. Right. And, and like they would maybe fix some of these. Right. Flaws. Right. But I feel like they're able to do that still just because they show just a kind of starting off. It's like I said before, it's not a full on Spider-Man's not even in it at all. Right. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, they haven't even brought that in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll I just- <laughs> I'll give my follow up at the very end. Yeah. Um but okay, so the next one we're going to talk about is Spider-Man Homecoming, which is the most recent of the Spider-Mans. Um mm-hmm. it's 2017 and it was directed by John Watts and I had not seen this one before, but I really? saw it recently. Um and I this one was full Marvel, and yeah. I could definitely tell. Oh, yeah. Um, and, I mean, one of the reasons you can tell is because he had Robert Downey Jr., who's Marvel just owns his soul now. Yeah, So he, he has to be in all of them. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so he's in it. So basically, in this one, this is, takes place right after the uh, Avengers have a fight in New York. And there's a character, Adrian Toomes? Thomas? Adrian. Um, yeah. And he's played by Michael Keaton. And he runs a construction company that is set to clean up some of like the remnants of the Avengers fight with the aliens. Mm-hmm. And so he has to clean up like the broken buildings and they leave like alien technology and everything. But then his company is cut out of the deal because instead of giving it to them, the Stark company comes in and decides to do all the cleanup. Right. And that's who the city instead hires. And this like enrage enrages Adrian and he like kind of tells his workers to take some of the alien tech yeah. anyway. Just like so they don't notice and they kind of they steal it and he decides to make um weapons using the mm-hmm. alien technology exactly and i think they call him vulture yes in it. he becomes vulture yeah he's kind of like a small town villain kinda, yeah just yeah. local yeah yeah not like the alien villain yeah to where it's out for local. everybody exactly yeah and he really he kind of like wants to do good for his family with these weapons yeah but he's also making alien tech weapons mm-hmm. and selling them out exactly and um also so spider-man peter parker who is played by tom holland he kind of gets wrapped up in this fight and finds out some things about this and again this takes place right after the avengers film uh, the Venge- avengers civil war mm-hmm. and so he has worked with the avengers and worked with iron man and tony stark and he kind of wants to become an avenger yeah but he's, <laughs> he's still in high school he is a funny kid he's so cute in this film and he just <laughs> wants to like be part of the team right and tony's like no you're not you're right, not ready you're like 12 right <laughs> yeah he's like just why don't you just be the neighborhood friendly spider-man yeah exactly and like leave everything else to us and i'll just mm. call you when i need you yeah and so it's kind of him trying to like be a high schooler but then he also really just wants to be spider-man as an avenger and then he gets wrapped up in this um Mm -hmm. sale of alien technology weapons yeah run by vulture my question in that one was i wasn't fully understanding what zendaya's role excuse me zendaya's role in that oh yeah yeah so she plays michelle and she is on like a academic decathlon yeah basically and peter parker is part of the academic decathlon right. because he's a nerd <laughs> well i was like is she supposed to be like his mj yeah i think they're writing her to become that character okay. 
Like in this film, she is not like the Mary Jane that we kind right. of know from other Spider Mans. I think she's going to become that. Okay, yeah, because I was like, she doesn't say a whole lot. She right. well, most of her things right. are just like kind of one liners, but mm-hmm. and she has her little presence in there. Yeah, but. I'm just like, who are you supposed to be? Like, why are you? Right. And because it's like Zendaya, I expected more than what happened. And I was like, I'm okay because they're setting her up to do that. But what what did you think of her in this movie? I thought it was really basic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just because it just leaves it so open to like what could happen or where she, the work they're going to take her her character right. in the whole like spider-man yeah series and, and i didn't like there isn't like he does have a crush on another girl named liz right and so i didn't see a bunch of like the sparks fly yeah <laughs> so it's between him like, and zendaya's you're character you're sitting here by yourself and we're over here so we're gonna all be lame right like, and she's kind like kind of like, like awkward teenager right yeah she's definitely like the awkward kind of weird girl right yeah character so i don't mm-hmm. know we'll see where that goes i i liked ned who was played by yeah. jacob uh Batalon? Yeah, who Is plays it? Peter's best Peter's friend. Best friend, yeah, and he's like, I just want to be the man in the chair, like <laughs> his yeah. expression, because there's always a man in the chair, like behind a. A computer, computer telling him like oh this is what this is and th- and you can do this and that and right he He's made like it so guy. funny yeah yeah i know i loved him i also really liked that this felt very high school oh yeah you know like usually like toby mcguire i'm like yeah you're like 30 i know but in this film i was like look- no they're definitely high schoolers yeah oh yeah it, it was definitely the high school awkwardness too mm-hmm. so it's just like dude are you gonna just say something or right you know, do <laughs> yeah. something <laughs> yeah like he wants to use spider-man to like impress a girl yeah like that's so yeah. high school and he's and like, i loved well, it you left us hanging we're like just, we're just gonna go home <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's so cute i like that whole ice high school feel of it too mm-hmm. yeah so it was very believable out. oh yeah yeah i also loved the opening of this like how peter parker is like on his cell phone like oh, recording yeah, the, the whole like his like little documentary for himself with like working with the Avengers, and I felt like that was perfect because it exactly showed where you are in the Marvel universe and mm-hmm. like its timeline. So I didn't have to guess what was going on, and it was such like a high schooler would Typical totally do that. High schooler, yeah. yeah, you're gonna show off what you what you yeah, just did, just like on your phone. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like, like if it was like now, he would have had it on like his Snapchat stories <laughs> or something. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but I thought they did that great. And yeah, I just thought it was a really great opening. And it really went into, like, the character of Peter Parker. He's just, like, super excited. Oh, yeah. And he loves Iron Man. Oh, yeah. and I just <laughs> oh, yeah. I just loved that. I just want to be an Avenger. Right. It was so cute. Okay, so we're going to take another break, and then we will come back and keep talking about Spider-Man. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Movie Podcast. We are continuing our conversation about Spider-Man Homecoming. Mm -hmm. And we were just saying how the entry really works great in the beginning of this film. It really sets the stage for all the Avengers and where this movie lies in the Marvel Universe. And kind of sets up about some of Peter's character. And I I really enjoyed that. I also want to say that Tom Holland played this role so well. He's such a cute guy. He's so cute. 
Um, and I just thought he was so enthusiastic. Oh, yeah. Which fits Spider-Man, but I also feel like that's just how Tom Holland is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, I really got that feel. It's not too high school over enthusiasm because I feel like teenagers now are just like, just leave me alone. I'm going to yeah. go do my own thing. But he was just like genuinely excited about, you know, when you get something what what does he tell his aunt it's an internship or something yeah like he that. has an like, internship oh with like with uh tony stark right an internship. like he just got a 1600 on his sats and he's just like celebrating yeah it was so cute and just like i also loved how he is definitely a nerd like i feel oh, like yeah. i did not get that feel as much from like the other spider-mans no but like him and like him and ned are like doing legos oh yeah they build the death, <laughs> they build the death star and legos and like they like are on the academic decathlon right and they're like pretty good and it's just those two like they're just their own friends right there that's yeah that's, that's, their whole that's all they need exactly <laughs> Yeah. Although, as we did mention, um, Peter Parker does have a crush on a girl named Liz, who's played by Laura Harrier. And mm -hmm. um, I just that was also cute. I just think it's funny that he wants to go to her party and um, be like, oh, I totally know Spider-Man. Right. You know, to impress well, her. Well, that was Ned's fault. Too. I know. He's like, this is so stupid because he has his little mind battle with himself. Like, it's just so stupid. What am I doing? <laughs> then he gets caught up yeah. doing other things. But yeah, I also like that he peter gets made fun of in a very high school way oh yeah which oh, like yeah. totally works like Just even like his the bully's typical, a nerd yeah the typical nerd who gets bullied kind of mm -hmm. yeah uh, i thought that was really that was well done right um and also just like i love that aunt may is played by marissa tomei oh yeah and like tony stark just loves her <laughs> his little jokes about her is like what is she wearing right? yeah it's like yeah. really man yeah which Come definitely on. breaks out of the like classic aunt may yeah it's like old right type exactly. thing yeah and I, <laughs> although marissa tomei is like older but she looks she great she looks great in the she's oh, yeah. really taking care of herself yeah, she has. i hope i do <laughs> i know right like those goals i know right yeah, oh, she, and she, she played that well, and you could tell that she really cared about Peter. Oh, yeah. And um, that, that was really cute, and I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also, there are also some really great um, cameos by Captain America yeah. in this film. <laughs> And there, there's also like Hannibal Burris plays like a really small role. Yeah, like I didn't the know that was him teacher. until I watched it again, and I was like, "That is Hannibal Burris." Yeah, <laughs> but he's not. I mean, it's it's a small role. He could be funnier. Yeah, like, you just kind of like see him, and you're like, yeah. "Oh, that's Hannibal Burris." Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was fun. I think it's a really fun movie, and they really get the role. Like as we were saying, like the villain Vulture isn't like a big time villain. Right. He's just kind of like selling weapons like kind of small scale mm -hmm. and they really got the feel of like neighborhood spider-man yeah like exactly. so the crimes are smaller because you know he's a high schooler yeah they and i definitely be got that big right he's not fighting you know tony stark asked him to do one thing yeah and then he kind of leaves him back and goes back to high school mm -hmm. <laughs> which is sweet and also so robert Downey jr does come into the movie a little bit um he doesn't have a giant role but he just plays iron man so well yeah oh yeah so he is iron man yeah I he think is if they ever tried to remake it it just wouldn't be the same no 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 he's definitely tony stark oh yeah and even like in interviews i'm like man you it's kind of you really that guy no you yeah. really are <laughs> yeah so i mean he did a good job and i feel like he came in just the right amount oh, to yeah. like make the story make sense and i really enjoyed that oh yeah oh yeah of course and just the concern he had for um for peter for peter yeah. too it's just like we want you to be on the team like this is why i made you this suit and mm -hmm. to be a part of us but you need to take it easy even like um when they were what is it they um in his suit it's like called the training. oh like he has like the training wheels yeah, program training wheel pro yeah the suit he, doesn't have all the abilities yeah. yet yeah and yeah. he figures out what they all like how much tony put into the suit for mm -hmm. him like mm -hmm. after he kind of hacks it and takes that out but yeah um, i really like how tony wants to really protect him yeah and show him the ropes yeah yeah, and I thought that was also nice because it does give us another side of the Iron Man character. Oh, yeah. As well. Oh, yeah, of course. Which, you know, it was really good. Yeah. And I Which, enjoyed that. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to, like, expand on, you know, the Spider-Man. Well, I mean, I guess they did a little bit with the uh, Infinity Wars. I don't. Yeah, I'm they brought him into another yeah. Avengers film. Right. Yeah. So I'll be curious to see what they do from there. Um, also, just to wrap us up. I would like to say I love Spider-Man Homecoming. I think it's adorable. It's probably up there as some of my favorite Marvel films. Yeah. Um, and I would definitely watch it again. Highly suggest. Um, with Venom, I like the idea of Venom. I feel like they could have done it better. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, yeah, in sure. general, I would say if you want to watch like the Venom film, because maybe you just really like that character, mm -hmm. you know, 
by all means be my guest but i i will not yeah. be seeing that film again I, it was yeah, not my I would, favorite i would wait till it comes out if i saw it again i right, mean like i would on watch, dvd <laughs> yeah but just to watch it again just so you have that you know quick backstory mm-hmm. um that's the only reason i think that's how i felt with the first captain america too it's like yeah. i have to watch this one just because it like tells you kind of about it which marvel doesn't disappoint in its movies no they don't so yeah. but like that's the only reason why i was like okay i'll watch venom just to see where it goes and right. i hope when they do incorporate um the the um battle with spider-man and venom mm-hmm. and all that if they ever if they do it's not said that they are but that it just kind of enhances the whole you know right. okay this is why i need to know this kind of situation you know yeah to like the setup for some of yeah, the exactly. later marvel films exactly and i would be really curious if they did have a crossover between like spider-man and venom because i personally feel like the spider-man film was great and i'd be interested to see how they worked with venom right. after this you know exactly. i think the studio is probably waiting to see how it does money wise oh yeah to see if they do it again i think they'd be fine either way though because <laughs> if they have marvel <laughs> yeah 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 we'll see we'll see yeah um so yeah so i mean if you like venom you know go ahead and go see it um yeah. i will not be there yeah. but you know don't hold your hopes too high i mean it's good right. for I mean, I, w- I was telling you, I went with my sister and I, it's like, you know, the kids would like this kind of yeah. thing, you know yeah, what I mean? I but if that. you've read the comic books, don't expect it to just dive into right. like the whole comic book, this is Venom kind right. of thing to start It's also with. really not exactly like the comics no. really at all. Yeah. So, yep. So, all right. We'll see. Oh, also last note about mm-hmm. Venom, like all Marvel films, make sure you stay through the whole credits. Yep. There is like two scenes and you want to make sure you see both. Right. I do suggest those. Um, So, yeah. So thank you for joining us on the GSMC movie podcast where we talked about Venom and Spider-Man Homecoming. And uh, we hope that you guys listen in next time. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts movie podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts podcast network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google. Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.